Good morning and welcome to St. David's on this anniversary Sunday. We are happy to see all of you this morning and a special good morning to those who are watching virtually today. Our registration is open for the next few weeks of services, so if you plan to come, please make sure you go online and register. And just a reminder, with the provincial mandatory mask rule in place, masks need to be kept on for the service. Christopher and I are permitted to remove ours when speaking or singing as long as we're keeping a distance of four meters in which we are. At the end of the service this morning, please remain in your seats and one of the ushers will let you know when it's your turn to leave. I will go outside to meet you. On your way out the door this morning, we invite you to take a cupcake with you. Usually on Anniversary Sunday, we would be having a luncheon <coughs> and gathering following the service, but we are not able to do that this year. So we have cupcakes prepared for you, and um, if you require a gluten-free one, they are on the side table, the brown table by the Puro. Um, the other ones are here. There's chocolate and vanilla and you know, all kinds. So please take one on your way out and have a special little dessert for lunch or supper. If you were planning to place a coffee or cookie dough order, those can be sent in up until late tonight. Um, the orders will be going in tomorrow. So if you have not yet submitted an order and you wish to do so, please make sure you send that to Christopher before tomorrow morning. On this special Sunday, as we celebrate 160th anniversary of St. David's, I welcome you to worship today. God has gathered each of us here. We are all a gift and a true blessing. And we gather to share our joys and concerns in this community of faith, and we lift up prayers for ourselves, our friends, this community, our province, and the world. Are there any celebrations today? Any birthdays this week? Quiet. I want to. I want to celebrate that we took. We did our first film for the Jewish Film Festival yesterday, and for the rest of the week, so we're celebrating that that was successful. Oh, we did it virtually, right? right? Which that's is a big change. So the first one is done. That's great. Yes. Anybody that we would like to hold in our prayers today? So as a community, we gather together during all moments in our life and faith, both those we've named and those we've left unnamed, and we lift them to God, our hope, and our creator. I continue to remind us that we are all in this together. Even though we can't shake hands, hold hands, or embrace in a hug, we can still greet each other with a friendly smile, even behind our masks, a way to show each other that we care. We come to celebrate the love of God and Jesus for us, for our community, and for all of creation. And the love reaches into our lives, inspiring us to reach out to those in need around the community and around the world. Will we answer that invitation to share the love to make a difference? That is up to each one of us. We light our Christ candle today, the light of Christ, the one who offers love and acceptance. Our opening song this morning is Come In, Come In and Sit Down. Yeah. 
So come in and worship and answer the call, for we are a part of the family. Come in, come in, sit down. You are a part of the family. We are lost and we are found, and we are a part of the family. We are called to be the church, to love God and serve others. So we come to celebrate and worship God in joy, in expectation, and in hope. We are Thanks be to God. morning comes from the 8th chapters, chapter of Romans, beginning at the 14th verse. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness within our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. A hundred and sixty years. A hundred and sixty years as a church and a hundred and sixty years as a family of God. 
Today we gather, some here worshiping together and some worshiping with us at home. And we realize that we can't all be together this year to celebrate the anniversary like we do most years. Because this year is really like nothing any of us ever imagined. But we are gathered as a group that have spent time together. We can't help but think of all the people who over those 160 years have entered our doors, sat in our pews, sat in the chairs in the gym, shared their gift of music, their other talents, and been a part of St. David's. We are gathered as people that worship together for many years, and I know that we all have memories of some of the events that have taken place, and many of you have your own memories. Worship, concerts, pageants, special services, picnics, luncheons, dinners, fundraisers, Sunday school, youth group, confirmation class, outreach programs, men's group gatherings, UCW, choir practices, and the list continues and goes on. I'm sure we all have memories of people who are not able to be with us today and some who have passed away as well. We are a church together, but how did we actually even get here? Each one of us was brought here because of the calling of God. God was doing something important in each one of our lives. In John 6, 44, says Jesus speaks of the reality of calling, where God brings people to Jesus. Somehow, God opens ears and eyes at important moments in our lives and allows us to hear God's calling to us. God allows us to choose, of course, because the coming is in our realm of activity or appears, but God's there calling us. We all know that sometimes in life we hear and sometimes we don't. Perhaps somebody in our home might be asking us to do something and sometimes we might legitimately not hear because of background noise, TV, something that's going on. And sometimes we choose not to hear being distracted by maybe a book we're reading or something we're doing. And sometimes Simply, it's our desire just not to even bother to hear because we don't want to go do what we're being asked to do at that time. We don't know how loudly or how long God has actually called any of us. But we do know that God did because we are here. And that's how we get to be here in the first place. And that is how we were able to form a church family. In 1979, Bernard Edwards and Nile Rogers wrote an up-tempo song, and it seemed perfect for the disco era. They offered it to Atlantic Records, who took a listen and turned the pair on their way. Undaunted, the composers kept pitching this song over and over and over again, until Atlantic gave We Are Family a second chance. Sister Sledge dropped it onto an album, and the label opted to try the song out as a single. The infectious lyrics and easy-to-follow tune immediately caught the public's attention, and the record hit number one in several different genres. Yet it probably would have died with disco if Willie Stargell and the Pittsburgh Pirates had not adopted it as the team's theme song. For years, night after night after night, at home games, thousands joined their voices to, to declare we're all part of the family. The ballpark choir that sang We Are Family represented all people, all races, classes, and faiths. They came from different backgrounds and had far different life experiences, but they were bonded by the love of baseball. That song, represented their feelings for each other while they celebrated. No matter the final outcome, and long after the notes of the song had faded, they continued to think of themselves as a family. Over the past 2,000 years, the Christian family has become a bit dysfunctional. Rather than come together to celebrate our common faith as followers of Christ, Many go their own way and treat others as lesser Christians, and we're seeing that more and more lately. Rules have been created to reinforce the attitudes. We can think of the ministries here at St. David's that we're involved with and the lives that are impacted by what we do. 
when people concentrate on working together and serving one another, they discover quickly that we're all part of the same family. Who are you willing to include in your family? Can you be as inclusive as the Pittsburgh fans? It's time to come together as a body of faith that shares a common goal. And this can start with each of us becoming as accepting as Jesus was. So we come to worship. We come because God did something special in our lives at one time in the past. We gather together, we worship, we pray together despite all the differences. And without question, there are definitely differences. If we think of those in our church community, we think of the different tastes of music, the different tastes of cars, different tastes of homes, clothing, jobs, backgrounds, relationship statuses, and the list continues. We can make quite an impressive list of differences, yet, despite all of those, we have worshipped, we've played, we've prayed, and we've worked together as a congregation for 160 years in Ronse. How is that possible? How could we do it despite differences? And I'm sure that some of the differences might have been hard for some people to work through, and we continue to move forward. We have gone forward as a congregation for all these years because we have something in common that is bigger than what we have in different. I have confidence in God. I have confidence that God, who began a good work, will bring it to completion over time. The church is not in our hands. The church is in God's hands. Our lives are in God's hands. And as I've gotten older, I realize more importantly that life is way too big to hold in my own two hands. We need other people's hands. And when I think of all the people that have been a part of this church family for 160 years, that's a lot of hands. It has taken a lot of hands to hold this church. Romans is such a beautiful book in the Bible. There are so many good lessons. It was written when Paul's theology was much more mature, and it's a beautiful book, but what is inspiring is the last chapter. In the last chapter, there is no teaching. There is nothing. But in the last chapter, it says, important words, greet this person, greet that person, greet all people. It makes a whole list of reasons why we need to welcome people and why we need to greet everyone. As I was reading that, I realized that these are the people who were with Paul in his ministry. All of them worked so hard. It was not Paul alone who built the church. All these people worked together to build the church. And our life is like that. We never make it all by ourselves. I don't know about you, but I believe in the church. I believe and I think among human communities, the church is the most beautiful place. And now I see why God chose church. So I believe in the church as a living body, as a living community, and as a family where we've all come together here. We have a common calling. Each one of us is here because God called us. There's really no other reason. Let us build this church beautifully together. Small hands that we all give, they matter. Over the next many years, let us continue to build our beautiful church so that we can carry that on. We can hand it over to children and grandchildren so we continue to be a church in the valley. Let us place the soil, let us work together. You come to church to build community. We're doing valuable things, worthy things, and important things. And we have confidence in God who began a good work, and God will bring it to completion over time. So although we can't all physically be in this one space today to celebrate and to worship, we're reminded that we are all family. And we are reminded by the words where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there that God is always with us. 
So I hope that this day is a day focusing on wonderful memories and for remembering how we got here. Please appreciate each other, our history, and even our differences, and appreciate that despite them, we are still family, a wonderful church family.
The ministries of St. David's continue to live our call through worship, through pastoral care, through prayer and outreach. We give thanks to each of you for your continued support in our church, in our giving, in our sharing, in our living, we are all part of God's love. We'll ask blessings on our offering, that the offering received by plate and by par and by e-transfer enable us to continue ministry in God's name. Amen. Let us take a few moments this morning just to quiet ourselves and quiet our bodies, our hearts and minds as we take time for prayer. God of our past, we gather today to give thanks for the past. We think back to those who first had a vision of a church in this place. To those who give of their labor, their treasure, their time to make it happen. And as we remember the efforts of the founders, we offer words of thanks and praise. God of growth, we remember too those who helped our church to grow in wisdom and in faith. And so we think of study group leaders, ministry personnel, choir directors, Sunday school teachers, youth group leaders, and many others who provided leadership here at St. David's. We remember board and committee members, individuals who stepped forward to provide governance and leadership. And for all of the varied forms of leadership, we are so grateful. God of community, we remember events that brought us together. Suppers and lunches, clothing sales and choir concerts, pageants, bazaars and barbecues, potlucks and picnics, and so many more events. And for the gifts of friendship and fellowship, we say thanks. We think also of the many groups that have met in this space. Our men's group, our UCW, children's groups, youth group, choir, scouts, guides, AA, nursery school groups, and other community groups where we provided a time of fellowship and times of growth in community. God of our present, on this day we remember all that led this congregation to where we are today. And today we offer prayers for those who are ill, those who are lonely, those who are facing changes, those who are not able to be with us, those who are grieving, and those we hold in our hearts and on our minds. For 160 years of ministry to and with this community, for 160 years of growing together in love, for all that has made us what we are now, we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing song this morning is, Spirit God, be our breath. Oh, mm -hmm.
as the people of St. David's have done for 160 years, we continue to do so. We go out held in the loving arms of God who creates, redeems, supports, and sustains us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.